Thank you. Uh, so quick introductions. My name is Mark Adawag. I am the Associate Director for Recruitment and Outreach for the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. Um, I'm an ASU alum. Um, I'm originally from Honolulu, Hawaii. Um, and so definitely, again, excited that you all are here today to learn about the student opportunities. I'm also joined with one of my colleagues, Kaylee. Hi, everyone. My name is Keely Graham. I'm the Associate Director for Outreach and Recruitment in the IRA Fulton Schools of Engineering. I am originally from California um, and come from a family of uh, Sun Devils. And um, today we're going to be talking about all of our programs, but feel free to drop any questions that you have in the Q&A we're going through today, um, and we'll be able to address those for you. All right. So this is just a map um, just to help you orient yourself if you're not familiar with where ASU is located. We are located in Metro Phoenix, I'm in Arizona, and um, ASU has four main campuses. Today we're going to be talking about programs that are based at the Tempe campus and the Polytechnic campus. Here at ASU our programs are campus specific, so you'll choose a degree program and that will tell you which campus your program is housed at. Programs in the Fulton Schools of Engineering are based at the Tempe and Polytechnic campuses, um, and programs in the college are based at the Tempe campus. Um, and I'm going to go through my slides first, talk a little bit about the programs in the Fulton Schools of Engineering. I'm going to apologize ahead of time because I have littles running around the house who you can probably hear in the background. Um, the IRA of Fulton Schools of Engineering is the college at ASU that houses all of the engineering and the majority of the technology programs offered. Um, this slide just highlights who we are um, as a college. All of this information is found on our website, but these are some of our, our favorite stats and the things that we're very proud of. Um, a couple ones that I just wanna highlight is we are the largest schools of engineering in the country. Um, and because of that, we are able to offer, <laughs> we are able to offer all of these programs and opportunities for you as a student. We are also a tier one research institution. Um, so we have a lot of research expenditures. The majority of our faculty are research faculty or part of industry. And um, we have a high number of female students in our engineering programs. And our number six for uh, women is tenure track faculty, which is very unique um, in a large engineering college. And so we're very proud of that. Um, and we have a lot of high achieving students. Um, but my favorite, one of my favorite facts on the slide is that if our college was its own university, we would be ranked number 26 in the world with 79 utility times. And those are held by students and by uh, faculty and staff. Again, all of this information can be found on our website um, and we will drop some links into the chat for you later as well. Um, this slide just shows our numbers um, as of 20, as of first day of classes this fall. Again, as I mentioned, we are the largest schools of engineering in the country. We have over 25 undergraduate disciplines and 24 concentrations, plus 46 and growing graduate programs. We organize our degrees within the six schools of engineering. Um, we are an interdisciplinary college. As we know, engineering and tech fields are interdisciplinary. You will never work with just one um, type of professional. And so we want our students treated that way from day one. Our six schools are highlighted here. The first five found at the Tempe campus. The sixth school, the Polytechnic School, is found at our Polytechnic campus in Mesa. The only outlier to that rule is gonna be that our software engineering program is also based at the Polytechnic campus. Now, some of these programs do have a higher admission requirement than the rest of the university, and we'll talk about that um, a little bit later. But one of the great things about our programs is that if you come um, to ASU and you find that there's a different discipline that speaks to you within the Fulton Schools of Engineering, it is relatively easy to move across the schools um, of engineering. We just encourage students to do that their first year year and a half while they're with us. We encourage you to customize your time. So if you feel like you want to add um, a minor, another major, a certificate, um, maybe you wanna join the Honors College or you want to add a pre-health um, or pre-law track, those are things that we highly encourage our students to do. We wanna make sure that you're getting the experience that is specific um, to what your goals and dreams are. And we feel like we can do that here in the Fulton Schools of Engineering. Um, now, we do have a full list of our programs on our website, along with um, videos of each of these different disciplines and their concentrations. So it's a video that has um, staff and advising talking about what the program is, what the different disciplines are, the career outcomes, what the course load is like, and what the curriculum is like. And then it has an ambassador um, at the end talking about their experience and how they selected the program. So. Um, we would encourage you to look at those on our website if you get time. 
Um, and then another big question I always get from students is where will you live? Um, so at ASU, our residential communities are designed around the academic unit. So students who are in Barrett, the Honors College, would live in the Barrett Honors College residential community at either the Tempe or Poly campus. You can opt to live on a floor or wing with other engineering and tech students. You just have to make that choice when you register for housing. At our Polytechnic campus, our non-Barrett students live in Century Hall. And then at Tempe, they are currently living in Tucker House. There is a virtual tour online of Tucker, which you can explore um, as it is the newest residential community at the ASU Tempe campus. Um, but if you have questions about housing, feel free to drop those into the chat, I mean the Q&A as well. Um, one of the things that you're going to hear us talk about a lot in our session today is this idea of getting more than just a degree. We want our students, again, to customize your time. We want to make sure that you have hands-on experience, that you have the skills and experiences you need to be not just a successful student, but a successful graduate. When you go to apply for your graduate programs or industry jobs and internships, we want to provide you with enough opportunities so that you are the most competitive applicant in that job or graduate applicant pool. And we feel like the programs offered within the Fulton Difference um, on this customized website that we highlight can help you do so. So I would encourage you to go to the customized website, take a look at these programs. It's everything from undergraduate research opportunities um, to entrepreneurship and innovation, student organizations, competitive teams, leadership programs and outreach. Um, and you know, really think about as a student when you are creating your resume, your degrees at the top, and then you have three quarters of the page that you need to fill. And on an engineering and tech um, application and job interviews, they're going to be looking at what type of research you performed or what type of internships you have and the projects you created and work done in your classes. And so the things that we offer our students here at ASU allow them to build those resumes um, pretty easily for themselves. Because again, we want to make sure that you're not just a successful student, but a successful graduate. This information on this slide can be found on our website. Um, it is its own page with some more information as well, but these are um, some of the top employers of our students, um, as well as where those students work after graduation and how many of them um, within six months of graduation have jobs in their industry of choice um, or have gone on to continuing education. So a lot of our students um, do go on to industry jobs, but we do have a significant number that go on to master's programs, PhDs, um, they go into medical school and law school. Um, and you'll see that there's a little bit of an overlap there in the percentage, and that's because some companies will pay students um, to get their degree as part of that job. Um, and I know quite a few students who have done that, which is a really great, great opportunity for them. I'm gonna turn it over to Mark. Awesome, sounds good. Thank you, Kaylee. Um, and so my part of this presentation is gonna be talking, on the, talking about the S and the M. Uh, of STEM, so the sciences and the mathematics. Uh, but before we jump into that, we want to get to know you guys a little bit. So I'm going to launch a poll here. Um, and so if you can let us know, um, if I can get this going, if you can let us know what type of student are you? So we can kind of get a sense of who we have in our audience today. Are you a high school freshman, sophomore, junior, high school senior, thinking about transferring to ASU, thinking about graduate school, high school counselor, community member? Let us know. Looks like we got a lot of high school seniors here today. Great, awesome. Got some folks who are thinking about transferring, some family, got some uh, high school freshmen, sophomores and juniors in the Zoom webinar today, great. All right, I'm gonna also launch one more poll. Um, and so we let you guys know where we're located and where we're from. So let us know where you are joining us from tonight. We got our Arizona folks from around the world, from around the country. Ah, got some Midwest folks, West Coast, Phoenix, great. It is cold for us here for Phoenix people, so sure for those of you in the Midwest states are probably laughing at us right now because I kind of want to throw my hoodie on. All right, great. So we got a broad um, list of where people are joining us from. Great, awesome. Thank you for uh, letting us know where you guys are from. It's always good to know who our audience is um, and being in this webinar sphere, it's kind of hard to 
see all of you. So hopefully, um, you know, that kind of gives us a little bit of insight into where you're joining us from and what type of student you are. So gonna pivot a little bit, talk a little bit more about the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. And so uh, Kayla, if you can go to the next slide for me. And so as Kaylee mentioned, ASU, we're located in the Phoenix metropolitan area. We have four campuses. Uh, the programs that I'm gonna be talking about are specifically located at the Tempe campus. You'll notice that some programs are, some programs that I offer are offered on different campuses. Really, it would be at that point kind of selecting which campus is a better fit for you. Um, so just know the programs that I'm gonna be mentioning today uh, are the ones that are located at the Tempe campus. Uh, the Tempe campus is the historic Tempe campus when we were first founded as an institution. And so next slide for me, Kaylee. And so diving into the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, I want to share with you some of the statistics of who we are as a college. Uh, we, call, we like to call ourselves the academic heart of the university. Uh, at one point or another, almost all students at ASU will come through uh, our classes uh, by virtue of taking English classes, math classes, and science classes. Uh, but within all of that, we do have over 95 undergraduate degree programs you can choose from. Um, and our college is home to about 23,000 uh, students who are pursuing degrees, 25,600 students uh, who are pursuing degrees in the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. And so these numbers may seem big, um, you know, when you first look at them, uh, but yes, we are big, uh, but what this means is opportunity. There's a lot of opportunity in place for our students to, again, customize your journey uh, while you are at ASU. Um, I also have over 140 graduate degree programs. Um, we'll, talk, we'll talk a little bit more about accelerated programs and accelerated pathways uh, that might be available for you as well. Um, but I did wanna bring that up because some of you might already be thinking about master's PhD programs um, as part of the college decision process. Next slide for me, Kaylee. All right, um, and so, before I dive into the natural sciences division, I think it's also important to see the college as a whole. Again, I wanted to share with you the menu of opportunities that's available for you. So in the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, we're home to 23 academic units and departments. We're divided across three different divisions. Um, and so we have the natural sciences division, uh, the division that we'll spend a little bit uh, more in depth uh, in for tonight. Um, but we're also home to the social sciences and our humanities programs. Um, and so some of the academic units you see on the screen here um, are pretty um, uh, apparent. You might know, you know, hey, yep, psychology located in natural sciences. Um, but, you know, there are some programs that are in units that may not be as apparent. So anthropology, for example, that would be housed in our School of Human Evolution and Social Change. But again, this is meant to provide you with a guide and a look at how you can uh, create that double major pathway, pursue minors, pursue certificates. I'm actually reminded of one of our students, Nick. Nick came to us as a biological sciences major. Um, and so uh, he came as a first year student, um, was admitted to the program, had goals of wanting to go on to medical school, which I think many of you joining us tonight may have that as part of your career pathway as well. For Nick, Nick knew that in order to stand out from other medical school applicants, he needed to uh, get involved with uh, opportunities beyond the classroom. And so he actually got involved with research uh, and worked with a faculty member in our School of Transborder Studies and looked at how diabetes affects our Latinx populations here in the Phoenix metropolitan area. He also took it one step further uh, and minored in Spanish. Uh, so he's able to build connections and rapport with the families that he's working with. And so Nick's story actually spans across all three of our divisions, and he's now working to become an oncologist at the University of Virginia. So that's just his story. That's his pathway. That's one pathway. That's one um, example of how you can create your pathway here at the university. Um, and so to dive a little bit more into our natural sciences division, Kaylee, next slide, please. Here's, uh, again, just some quick numbers uh, about our natural sciences division. Um, and so we have 70 degree programs here, 60% uh, female student population, um, 341 tenured and tenure track faculty. And so the strength of our natural sciences programs 
uh, is illustrated through the diverse faculty that we have, the diverse student body that we have, uh, the amount of research that goes into uh, uh, what we do. Um, so as you can see, $140 million in research expenditures. And so there's, again, a lot of opportunities and a lot of ways uh, that you can uh, pursue a STEM degree in the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. Uh, the next slide here is actually going to show you a list of our degree programs uh, that's in the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. And so uh, here in Natural Sciences, uh, we have the School of Earth and Space Exploration, the School of Life Sciences, or Interplanetary Initiative, um, School of Mathematical and Statistical Sciences, School of Molecular Sciences, Department of Physics, and Psychology. Um, and so all of these degree programs are available for you uh, that you could, uh, again, we adhere to the general admission requirements to the university. Um, and so if you meet ASU requirements, you're admissible, admissible to our programs. And we'll spend a little bit more time uh, in that as well. But I wanna pivot a little bit and maybe invite, um, maybe my, I do have two students uh, who are joining us today too, uh, and maybe share a little bit about their student experience uh, being a student in uh, the School of Life Sciences and in the School of Earth and Space Exploration. So I'm actually gonna put June first in the spotlight. So June, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, being a student in the School of Earth and Space Exploration. Yeah, hello, my name is June Hyung. you just called me June. My major is in astrophysics, but I've also have a minor in physics. So because of that, I could, because physics and astrophysics have shared a lot, shared a lot of classes together, I could, if they have, I was more, easier than having to take a minor because I know that two as many of classes as if I took some the random unrelated topic as in like I guess English or something like that. Through that, and I, and I guess the school also provides different paths for astrophysics as well. There's a full one focus on such as like planetary systems or maybe in the cosmology or maybe on system design, which is for like more through more through technology line things. So even if I'm in the same field, I could, let's say, choose classes with, with more of my interest and stuff like that. So even though in the same degree, you can take minors that relate to your field or different for your field or classes that relate to your interest. So you can personalize your path a bit, no matter what major you're taking or, or what you want to do, basically. Awesome. Thanks, June. Um, and Barshini is also a student in her School of Life Sciences. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your experience so far? Hi, my name is Varshini. Um, so my major is medical microbiology, but I'm also minoring in chemistry. Um, and I'm also on the pre-med path. So a lot of the classes that I take overlap with each other. So that's why I was able to follow three different paths um, um, in the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. And so although um, my classes really tend to focus on lab um, and really heavy lecture, there's also fun classes you can take um, by being a natural science major, such as forensics anthropology, um, history of medicine, um, like bioethics. Um, so other than just like your core um, molecular classes, it's really nice to uh, dive into other fields as well um, by connecting science to history and etc. So even if you are a science major, don't worry, you can also uh, learn about history and math um, and other fields as well. Awesome. Thank you both. Um, and so the next slide here that Kaylee's going to bring up. And so one tool that I often like to encourage students to take a look at and get a deep dive into what the curriculum is uh, for different degree programs is this major map. Uh, this major map provides you uh, with some uh, examples of classes you'll take from term one to term eight. Um, and so it's a really good way to compare major maps with each other. And so if you're not really sure what you'll want to major in just yet, um, you know, definitely pull this up. Upper right hand corner, you'll see a, a link to our page, but all of our majors, including the engineering school, uh, will have major maps attributed to them as well. Uh, wanted to call your attention, particularly for the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. We do offer both bachelors of arts and bachelor of science programs. Biggest difference between the two uh, degrees is that the Bachelor's of Arts does require a foreign language, whereas the Bachelor of Science does not. And so in lieu of the Bachelor of Science, uh, students will take what courses in what's called uh, Science and Society. Um, so you'll see uh, in programs like chemistry or psychology uh, or physics, you'll have a BA or a BS, uh, but some programs uh, or most programs are only offered as a BS, but wanted to bring that up as a, as a key differentiator between a BA and a BS program. Kaylee, next slide. And 
again, uh, I wanted to highlight some of our key faculty uh, in the School of, uh, in, in the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, International Sciences Division. Uh, for example, uh, Dr. Lindy Elkins Tanton over on your right hand top corner there. Uh, she's leading a mission called Psyche 2020, uh, where we are building a spacecraft and we're going to send it to this asteroid called Psyche. It's made out of metal. Help us understand a little bit more about the universe. And our students have the opportunity uh, to participate in that. Uh, Dr. Joshua LeBaire, uh, who's the director of the ASU Biodesign Institute, was part uh, of the team of researchers that developed the uh, state of Arizona's first saliva-based test. And so ASU, we're at the forefront looking at how do we address the challenges and issues that we face today as a society. So again, just a few examples of some faculty that you uh, could potentially encounter as a student here at the university. And as you've heard from Kaylee, uh, what we really want to communicate to all of you tonight is, you know, you're more than just your major. We wanna encourage you to participate and take advantage of research, internship opportunities, study abroad opportunities, volunteer opportunities. These are what employers, what grad schools, what med schools are looking for. Um, and so looking beyond sort of the classroom and how can you get that experience. Um, and so for the end of this presentation, we'll hear a little bit more from our engineering students as well as uh, the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences students to talk more about how they've been involved beyond the classroom. Do you want me to take this, Kelly? Are you good? Sure, I think so. <laughs> um, so we just wanted to talk a little bit about what you can be doing now to prepare. Um, so the first thing um, is I know some of the students were um, still ninth through 11th grade. Um, so you might still be trying to decide what program you are or you're a senior in high school and you're still trying to pick a program. Um, so these are some questions that we ask when we're working with students trying to decide between all of the disciplines. Um, as a reminder, you can move across the schools, across the university, if there's a different discipline that, that speaks more to you or ASU launches a new degree, um, that is a, a better fit for you because we are always constantly launching new programs for our students. Uh, but a big question um, that you can ask yourself is, do you wanna go into research? Um, maybe you wanna work in a lab. Um, do you wanna go directly into industry or do you wanna continue on to a graduate degree? Um, some degree programs, um, for example, something in engineering uh, might sound a little more bio or chemistry heavy, um, but they are engineering disciplines. So if you're wanting something that's like a true chemistry or a true biology, that would be something that you would pick in the life sciences in the college. Um, and so that can help you kind of navigate the programs. Um, some programs are going to have specific uh, degree and job outcomes. Um, some programs are going to require an advanced degree. Um, and so that's one way to kind of weed in between the programs. Um, what questions do you like to solve? We're always asking our students to solve problems. Um, and so looking at the types of things and questions that you find interesting and that you're passionate about um, would help, help you uh, move between the programs. Um, some of our students, especially in engineering, are looking for something that's combined with business or something that has a little more management um, in the curriculum. So we have everything from technological entrepreneurship and management uh, we have industrial engineering um, that has a little bit of that business aspect to it, uh, engineering management, construction management. Um, so that could help you navigate. Um, a big one for our students in choosing programs can be how heavy in the programming languages um, the, the degree is, or uh, maybe what campus you prefer. Um, as we mentioned, our degrees are campus specific. So if there is a, a specific campus of ASU that you have your heart set on, um, that might help you navigate between the disciplines as well. And then, um, you know, take action. There's a couple things you can do. I mentioned the degree videos. Uh, Mark mentioned the major maps. That's a really easy way um, to navigate between the programs. If you are not a fan of physics uh, or organic chemistry, take a look at the curriculum map because those, those programs can make or break people. Personally, organic chemistry broke me. I did one semester and that was it for me. So um, that's a really great way to navigate between uh, what programs you're interested in. Um, we have um, different blogs and articles posted all over the ASU website. The one in the engineering college is called Full Circle. And daily there are articles posted about our students and staff and faculty. And so you can explore those and try to find yourself in the students and faculty and staff that we have a, at ASU. And um, maybe you find that one faculty member's research 
speaks a lot to you or the experience that one student has had or something they're an advocate for is something that resonates with you. And so that might be a good way to find your program. We have a lot of different events and activities you can participate in, like more to explore. Um, we always will meet with students virtually right now via Zoom. So you can meet with Mark, you can meet with myself, you can meet with students. Um, we have C at ASU and Fulton Fundamentals, which are um, workshops in engineering college for high school students where you can explore the disciplines. Um, but the biggest one I think um, that is helpful for you is to talk to current students. That's why we have current students in our session today. We'll give you some time um, to listen to them talk in a little bit, but you can also set up appointments with them virtually um, to, to learn more about how they pitch their discipline and why and the different projects and programs they've been a part of while they're here. Um, you do have to pick a discipline when you apply to ASU. I don't know if we mentioned that at the beginning, um, but there are application workshops as part of More to Explore that you can attend, um, but we don't have an undecided option. Um, so if you wanna be in one of the colleges, you would have to pick the, a specific major, or you can be in our exploratory STEM programs, um, which is through CESA. Um, and then after a few semesters, you would de declare a specific major. Um, we want you to make sure that you are following um, the required competencies that you need to have to be admissible into ASU. Um, I had mentioned earlier, some of the programs in the Fulton School of Engineering do have higher admission criteria than the rest of the university. Um, so on top of these, um, and the other slide that we're gonna show, there are higher requirements. Right now, because of COVID, um, ASU is actually using the core competencies to help determine the new American University scholarships. So it's very important that you do um, pay attention to these and you can find them on our website. Um, in addition to the core competencies, you will also need one of the following. And then again, um, in the Fulton Schools of Engineering, some of our programs have a higher SAT ACT score that we require or a higher GPA, but you can find those on our website and Mark and I did provide links in the chat that can get you to all of our information. Um, the programs in the college adhere to general ASU admission requirements. Um, so that's something that's always good for you to explore. And then um, I just mentioned the NAMU. So ASU does have the New American University scholarships. Um, more to explore sessions do include financial aid workshops. Um, ASU has a 24 hour financial aid line and they do financial aid sessions all the time um, via Zoom right now. So you can find those if you have questions. We wanna make sure everybody completes a FAFSA. Even if you don't think you're gonna qualify, you should always complete a FAFSA. Some scholarships do require a FAFSA on file in order to receive them. Um, you will automatically be evaluated for a new American University scholarship when you apply and are admitted into ASU. Um, and there is a scholarship calculator um, on the ASC website. So you could go in and fill in your core competencies, your um, GPA, your class ranking, and that would show you what you might be eligible for. But there are still a variety of scholarships that you can apply for. Um, so ASU has a scholarship portal that's currently open um, and will close early February. The Fulton Schools um, scholarship portal actually will open Monday um, and um, will close in early February. And then this, the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences also has scholarships, Barrett's Honors College, Honors College, cannot talk has scholarships. Um, so you can find a lot of these resources for you to help fund your education. And again, the financial aid workshops that admissions and, and ASU financial aid host would be very, very beneficial for you. Um, we want you to engage with us. Um, sorry, I'm gonna back up really quick um, just because there is a question about scholarships in the Q&A. So the ASU scholarship calculator is live. Um, it was under construction, but I was in there yesterday, I think, and it, it had been live, right, Mark? It's still, he's gonna double check, but it was live. It went live on Monday, because today's Wednesday. It went on Monday or last Friday? It actually went back again. down. So oh, they down. pulled it down again? Oh, well, if you have Thank questions you. about, yep. If you have questions about it, you can let us know. Um, but again, the financial aid workshops are gonna be the best um, option for you. And they will go through all of that with you. Um, again, engage with us virtually. Our Fulton website has um, audio tours. The ASU Visit website has audio tours. Um, you can attend events like this one or you can meet an ambassador. And then um, we did wanna spend a little bit of time talking about the accelerated paths at ASU. Um, Mark kind of um, mentioned it earlier, but 
Um, we understand that a lot of students are looking for a way to accelerate their time to degree, whether that's the time to complete their undergraduate degree or even complete a graduate degree. And so this is kind of a map um, for a path that a student could take to get an accelerated degree. You can opt in at any point on the path. Um, but as a high school student, when you're starting, we know a lot of you are taking AP, dual enrollment, IB um, credits. Here in Fulton, we offer engineering fast track, which are online courses that you can take for $25 a course. They are ASU courses taught by our faculty. And if you uh, pass the course with a C or higher and you would like to convert that credit into a college credit and a transcript, then you would pay the full course fee. There's a variety of classes that are offered um, within the college. Um, so like our calc classes are offered, chemistry, um, there's some humanities classes like English and history. And then we also have introduction to engineering and introduction to the programming languages. Um, so you can take those if they're not, if you don't have APs um, that match offered at your school. Um, and you complete all of the EFT classes and those dual enrollment classes as a high school student. We want you to participate in our programming like sessions um, like more to explore because we want to make sure you're taking the right courses that will map into your degree. Um, especially in engineering, we have higher requirements for math and physics, chemistry, um, and some other different core courses. And so we don't want you to have to retake those. We want to make sure you're taking the right college level course. And so by engaging with us in our sessions and working with our advising teams while you're in high school, we can help make sure that that happens for you. Um, when you apply to ASU and you graduate high school um, and you come to ASU, um, you don't have to worry about applying for a plus one program until you hit the end of your third year or term six. So as an ASU um, new student, you work with our orientation teams and they will help you build um, your curriculum map that's specific to you. So take the major map and any coursework that you've brought in and any customizing that you would like to do um, for your degree, and they will help you build that experience. Um, and if you are interested in accelerating um, your time to degree and you brought in a lot of course credit, um, that's the time to sit down and let them know um, that you'd like to finish early or that you would like to add another major or a minor and they can help you work through that. When you hit term six or the end of your third year, um, then you can apply for the plus one programs. And the way a plus one program works is in your last year of an undergraduate degree, you are going to take coursework that counts as both undergraduate and graduate level coursework. Then you will graduate and come back with for one more year and complete a master's. So a traditional um, undergraduate bachelor's and master's degree is gonna be four years for an undergraduate, two years for the master's. In a traditional four plus one accelerated program, um, it's gonna be five years, four years for the undergraduate, that last year being the combined coursework and then the plus one year for one year of your master's. In the plus one program, we also waive the GRE, which is the MCAT LSAT equivalent um, that most grad programs require, um, which is really nice. Um, and there's no penalty if you choose the plus one and you apply for it, and then maybe you get a full um, PhD that you decide to do, or you decide to go on into industry after graduation. Um, it's just a really great option for students. And for those students who came in with a lot of dual enrollment AP and IB, you might even be able to do a three plus one instead of a four plus one. So instead of that five year mapped program, it would be four years for you. So three years for the undergraduate, that last year, the third year being the combined coursework and then one year for the masters. And if you have a scholarship that covers four years of college, then you could use that towards your three plus one and get two degrees. And then the same amount of time it would take your friends just to get one. Um, so there's a lot of options here. Um, so you can find them on both of our websites. This is the website for the Fulton um, page. All of the Fulton degrees do offer a plus one option. Um, and some of them have maps to different degrees. For example, you can do an undergraduate degree in uh, mechanical and get a master's in aerospace or a robotics program. Um, so that's just one thing that you can look at. And then Mark's going to talk a little bit about how the, theirs work. Yeah, so long story short, if you're bringing AP credit, if you're bringing dual enrollment, those credits can certainly help accelerate your pathway uh, through an undergraduate degree. In the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, we have uh, many of our different programs offer accelerated pathways. Um, and so, you know, I have students who come into ASU uh, technically as sophomores um, because of the number of credits they're bringing in. Um, and our programs are a little bit more flexible. Um, uh, when compared to the engineering degree programs, um, but many of our, like the AP, 
the AP English, AP Bio, AP Psych, those kinds of um, AP exams, uh, IB exams, uh, certain scores can translate into college credit. So uh, if you have questions about that, if you have um, you know questions about certain subject areas, uh, let us know in the Q&A or certainly schedule a one-on-one -on -one appointment with us. We can certainly help walk through uh, with you uh, on that process. Again, this is just an example of, say, if you're a bio major in the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, uh, these are just some of the options and opportunities that's available for you uh, as part of that accelerated pathway. Oh, you're on mute. This is just a slide to let you know about Fulton Fundamentals, um, which is a workshop series that we're currently offering in, in the Fulton schools um, to help students understand um, what the different disciplines are and the career outcomes. There's faculty in these sessions, as well as current students. And so you can find these on our, on our website as well. Um, the next ones that we have coming up are the School of Electrical, Computer and Energy Engineering, which has the BSc in Electrical Engineering. Um, and then a variety of grad programs. And then the one on the 14th is the School of Biological and Health Systems Engineering, which has biomedical engineering um, as a program. And then I'm, I'm going to turn it over to some of our Fulton students first. Um, they're gonna talk a little bit about their programs and what they're involved in. And again, if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat. Hey, um, so my name is Shannon. I'm a student at the Polytechnic campus studying electrical systems engineering. Um, this is my fourth year at Arizona State University. Um, I also have two minors, one in business and one in design studies. Um, so I really have chosen to make my time at ASU a very interdisciplinary one. I'm interested in a lot of different subjects, so I've taken kind of a diverse path. Um, I'm also the president of Women in Science and Engineering and the treasurer for the Poly Photography Club. Um, those are like the two main ways I'm involved on campus. And then um, I work on campus as well for the academic advising office as a member of the freshman academic success team. So I have a ton of information about the Polytechnic School and all the programs that we offer within the Fulton Schools of Engineering. Um, so if you have any questions about those, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Um, I can tell you about life at Poly versus Tempe. Um, yeah, I have a ton of information. So please, please ask questions, put them in the chat or in the Q&A box and we'd be happy to answer those for you. Hi everyone, my name is Claire Peterson. I am a sophomore and similar to Shannon actually, I'm studying electrical engineering on the Tempe campus, not the Poly. Um, when I'm not in class, I spend my time being logistics director for Fulton Ambassadors, which basically means I help check to make sure everybody is getting their work done and all that fun stuff. And then I am also secretary for Society of Women Engineers. Um, there I work on managing a lot of the social media, taking notes during the meeting and or during our meetings and helping people out where we can. And then recently I also joined Helios Rocketry, which is a technical student organization on the Polytechnic campus. Currently we're working on a challenge to send a rocket up hundred kilometers in the air. So it's a pretty big task for us and we are planning to have that finished and compete in that competition by December, 2021. So very excited for that. Um, let me know if you have any questions about the Tempe campus or getting involved in leaderships in different technical organizations or FSOs in general. Thank you. Yeah, so I think a great thing that Claire highlighted is um, a lot of our students go between all of the ASU campuses. There's a free shuttle um, that you can take as a student to any of ASU's four campuses. Um, if there's a class or a student organization or a competitive team like Helios um, at a different campus that you'd like to participate in, um, you definitely can do so. I know quite a few of our students go between Tempe and Poly for um, things like Helios or um, our uh, Sendable Robotics. Um, Desert Wave Robotics, which is our uh, female robotics team that um, keeps just winning awards every year because they're so fabulous. Um, so there's a lot of really, really cool things that you can do to customize that experience for you. All right, and now my students. So Varshini, why don't you kick it off? Um, some of the things that you've been involved with. What's your Sunday journey so far? 
Hi, uh, my name is Rashini. Um, so as before, I am a medical microbiology major and I'm minoring in chemistry. Um, so a lot of the clubs that I'm in focus on science, but some um, focus on something else. Uh, so one of the clubs I'm in is science detectives. So basically we do science experiments for elementary students um, who are homeschooled or who are just in the Tempe School District or the Chandler Unified School District. Um, so we just right now we just do virtual zoom sessions where we do the experiment at home and we do the experiments using homemade supplies so they don't have to go outside to buy them. Um, I'm also in the United Nations Association. So I wanted to talk about uh, I joined the work club to talk about sustainability um, to talk about quality education, um, good health and well being. Um, I believe that everyone should have access to healthcare. care. Um, so that's another club that I'm in. Um, I also conduct research um, since I am a microbiology major, I'm really interested in immunology. Um, so I work at the Biodesign Institute um, of the Center of Vaccines, Immunotherapy and Biotherapy, uh, sorry, long name. Um, but basically I do, I do research on T cells um, and how we can utilize T cells to fight cancer. Um, but that's just a little bit more about me. I am a pre-med student, um, like I said before. And ASU is partnered with the Mayo Clinic. Um, so I've interned at the Mayo Institute before um, just to do research. Um, so there's a little, a lot of opportunities that the college offers. Hello, I'm Jin Young, as I've said before, and what I've been involved in as a club says, I was a part of the Students for the Exploration and Development Space, which is called Sports Med Sets. They brought in people in different fields of astrophysics or astronomy and from NASA, JPL. We went on tours of JPL and the, during the fall breaks, things like that, when before COVID, and hopefully after this is over as well. And as a matter of research, as an astrophysics major, I'm heavily involved in research. So I'm right now working to, to publish my paper, which is also going to my senior and honors thesis, hopefully by next month and before my graduate school applications. I'm also working on a JWSC proposal with the Impact Space Telescope, hopefully launching soon, so that I can get more data on my paper so that I can improve that as well in the future. So also, um, because of, let's say, ASU had a lot of upper research with joint other institutions as well, I've been able to get involved in research back here in Korea with an institution here, uh, the different professor here as well. So this is what I've been doing so far currently. Awesome, thank you guys. We have some amazing students here. So if you have questions um, about the student experience, please uh, drop them into the Q&A box. You know, I think uh, we do have some time in, in our webinar today to address some of your student questions, um, but I do wanna throw it out there. Maybe they kind of get the conversations going a little bit. For our students who are joining us tonight, why did you choose ASU? Don't everybody jump in at once. <laughs> go first. All right, um, I, <laughs> I chose ASU because uh, it was a very economical decision for me and it was close to home. I really like having the support of my family nearby um, to visit. They're just like a 30 minute drive south of here. So um, that for me was huge. But also um, I had a brother who just graduated from ASU last spring and all he could tell me about was that ASU was a great place to go for engineering majors. We have so many opportunities available to us. And um, I can definitely say that like I've been given tons of support since starting here as a freshman last year, both by students and faculty. Yeah, I'll jump in next. Um, Originally, I really didn't want to go to ASU. Um, I'm from Arizona and I wanted to go out of state so bad. Like I cried at my orientation. I wanted to go out of state so bad. Um, but like Claire said, it was more of an economical decision to come to ASU. Um, I had a scholarship here. It's significantly cheaper to be in state. That's just a reality. Um, but I'm so glad that I did. Like I've had a great time at ASU. Of course, I was very apprehensive of it in the beginning, but there, like everyone's saying, there's so many opportunities and like, especially within the Fulton School of Engineering, there's a lot of money there. So there's a lot of like opportunities for research and getting involved and like, the, you know, pretty much anything you want to do can get funded, which is a really amazing opportunity that a lot of, not a lot of universities have. 
Um, and then as far as the going out of state piece, I didn't get to go out of state, but I did get to go out of country. So ASU has a really, really phenomenal study abroad program. Um, I actually got to do two study abroads last year. I did um, a two week program in France where I was learning about photography. And then I did a six month program in Australia where I was an exchange student. Um, so that's another thing I have a lot of information about. Study abroad was a really awesome thing to do. Um, I highly recommend it. Um, yeah, so that's, so that's why I chose ASU. Even though it wasn't my first choice, um, it had a lot of opportunities and I'm really glad that I did, like really glad. <laughs> I can go next. Um, so why did I choose ASU? So ASU has a lot of different opportunities. Um, so the previous slide showed that you can study abroad, you can do research, you can join so many different clubs and organizations. And I feel like ASU really helped me get out of my comfort zone. Um, a lot of things that I did in high school and right now, um, or like in the beginning of freshman year and sophomore year, um, I tend to focus on just my career and my academics. Um, but with opportunities at ASU, I was able to both um, talk, um, talk more about um, like sustainability, um, et cetera. Uh, just something that's different than just learning about molecular stuff like DNA and cells. Um, I think that ASU really helped me apply um, what I learned in class um, to a lot of extracurriculars and like just like the real population of uh, what's happening in Arizona. Um, so that's why I really liked um, ASU. My reason for choosing ASU was because of the, one, of the strong, one of the schools that strong astrophysics programs, which many schools don't really have a focus on astrophysics. And also because it was a state school, it was more financially affordable than other private schools might have been. And I was also able to receive a scholarship to come here, which was more difficult as in fact just to get one. So it's both like an academic and economic decision for me. Awesome, thank you guys. I mean, I, I think a lot of our students who are joining us today too are probably considering why ASU. And so to hear from um, you know, your, your journey, to hear your stories about why you chose the university and the things that you've been involved with um, is resonating with our audience tonight. So thank you. Um, again, students, folks who are with us today on the webinar, Q&A is open, wide open. So feel free to drop your questions. Um, but moving along uh, here. So uh, as for the rest of this week, it is more to explore week. Uh, the slide that you see are just a couple of other sessions that are happening uh, tomorrow. Um, and so if you are interested in med medical school, uh, there's a session tomorrow happening um, uh, about the pathway to medical school. If you want to learn more about the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, we'll do a deep dive into all of our degree programs, not just the natural sciences, but our social sciences uh, and our humanities. We have another session tomorrow at 3.30. Uh, and then there's also another session about becoming a master learner with a degree in technical leadership. It's one of our newer degree programs uh, that just came on live uh, this past semester. So uh, join us if you want to learn more about these programs, uh, visit tours.asu.edu uh, to sign up. And then I think Kay Kaylee's going to plug her sessions as well. Yeah, if you weren't able to attend our, um, our general engineering tech session um, that we had yesterday, we have another one tonight um, at 7.30 with Mike and Kim. Um, so the other thing too is um, every week on Mondays and Wednesdays, Mark and I and our teams at 4.30 Arizona time host um, info sessions that are deep dives into our programs. So if you can't make um, these general sessions that he's mentioned and that I've mentioned tonight or tomorrow, um, we're here every week, every week just for you. So come join us, ask questions. Um, we also have some student experience sessions, um, our research um, teams are going to talk about student undergraduate research tomorrow. Um, our construction program, if you're interested in construction, um, they're hosting a session tomorrow. Aviation, which is one of our more popular sessions. Um, so professional flight, aeronautical management technology, um, air transportation management. Um, they have a session with their faculty um, tomorrow as well. Our material science and engineering faculty have a session and I did it with him last time and he is so entertaining. I just encourage you to join. Um, and then human systems engineering, which is another program at our poly campus, um, which is really interesting. We have a lot of students actually who are Tempe students and they pick up the human systems engineering minor 
at the Polytechnic campus. Um, and so looking at how people interact with technology um, is a really, really interesting field. And so these are some of the sessions that um, we have left the rest of this week as well. Um, oh, go ahead. Just jump in real quick, Kaylee, um, yeah. about human systems engineering. That's a huge up and coming field. Um, human systems engineering is basically where psychology meets engineering. Absolutely fascinating program. I wish I had known about it my freshman year. I probably would have gone into that instead. Um, I have lots of friends who have picked up minors on it. One that's even picked up a double major. Can't recommend that enough. Definitely check that out. And there's concentration options in that program too. You can pick um, user experience um, in there. So it's definitely really, really interesting. And the faculty will be in that session as well. Um, so Q&A is open. If anyone has questions, parents, students, anyone, this is such a great time to get your questions answered instead of having to email us later. You can ask is them wide now. Open. <laughs> but Mark and I have provided our email address. If you are too shy, um, you can always email us and ask questions or to set up a virtual appointment with anyone on our team or our students as well. Um, while we wait to see if any questions come in, we just want to thank everybody for joining us today. Yes, a question. Rory, kudos, brownie points all the way. Um, would you say engineering degrees such as biomedical lead to research opportunities? Yes. Um, so in the Fulton schools, we have the theory program, which is a Fulton undergraduate research initiative. So it's one way that our students get involved with research as undergraduates. Um, you can do it for two semesters. You get paid a $1,500 stipend each semester that you participate, plus $400 for materials, and the option to apply for travel stipends to present at conferences where you can earn more funding for your research. Um, and in theory, you are partnered with a faculty member and you do your own research in their lab and then present at a symposium at the end of the semester. Um, our theory symposium this semester will be virtual, so anyone can go. Um, we actually, you probably will get an email invitation from us to attend since you attended this session. Um, and so you can find students who are BME students doing research. Um, one of the students in our office, Allie, she um, is doing her theory research on um, in a cadaver lab at the Mayo Clinic. Um, which is very interesting if you like that sort of thing. Um, I don't think I could be in a cadaver lab, but they're looking at um, pelvic pressure. Um, and so that's what her and, and Cameron, who's one of our other students, they did their research on. And they got that research opportunity and met that faculty because there was a researcher who was looking for students and knew their um, professor in one of their classes and he put it out there and it was as easy as them just reaching out and saying we're interested. I know students who've gotten in biomedical actually specifically, um, Amanda was one of our students who graduated last year and in ASC 101, which she took her first semester, she went to her office hours for her faculty member and said, hey, I'm interested in research. Do you have anything open? And she worked in that lab for three years, which led to her having an internship every summer um, and she had a, multiple job offers before she even graduated. Um, so all of the degrees have research experience and opportunities. It's really just what, what you're interested in studying. There's multiple fields in um, BME, for example, and you don't have to be in a specific discipline as your degree necessarily to be in that lab. I know a lot of students who are in different labs all across the university, they might be um, for example, we have aerospace students who I know are in some CC labs, our school in earth and space exploration. I know some students who are in Mark's programs and in, in um, engineering labs. Um, you have to remember ASU is an interdisciplinary yep. um, campus and program. And so really, you're going to pick a degree and that degree is going to give you the content knowledge and the theory behind um, an ability to address problems and questions in any field. So it's really important that you not only get the degree, but you have the experiences that are hands on outside the classroom to help you find your focus and get those real world experiences to build that skill set and find your focus. Um, so again, you really can pick, pick a discipline and a field and find something that matches with it. Um, and it's really just, you know, what, what skills specifically do you want? Do you want to be able to code? Do you want to be able to design um, do you want to be able to do more circuitry work? Do you want to build biological systems or biomedical systems, biological devices? Um, you know, really what is it you're interested in doing with it? Um, and that will kind of help guide what, what you do. 
Um, any other questions? Thanks for that question, Lori. The this first is a really one. Good question. Yes. So good, right off the bat. Cool. All righty. Well, everyone have a great night. Thank you to our fabulous students, um, always showing up for us. Yes, thank you for about their work, experiences. Students. We appreciate Dune's even you. in Korea right now. I know. Us here. So thank you, Dune. Appreciate it. Have a great rest of your semester to all in the session. Um, and reach out if there's anything that you need from us. Have a great day and go Devils. Bye, everyone. <laughs>